So we're going to be talking about domain and range, and we're going to use these relations to do it. So domain and range are actually very simple ideas. The domain is all the allowable x values, and the range is, I guess you can guess, all the allowable y values. Now I'm just going to do all five of these so you can see what it really means. All right, so for this one here, are there any values that x is not allowed to be? Can I put a million in there? Yeah, two times a million is a million plus one. You can see these arrows go on and on and on forever, which means that all of the x values are accountable here, and all of the x values are accountable here. So the domain here is really simple. x is in the set of real numbers. That's an R. Alternatively, you can express the domain as negative infinity to infinity. Um, now, what about the range? Are there any y values that it can't be? Well, look, the arrow goes on and on and on forever and ever and up and up and up. No. No, okay, y can also be all the real numbers or negative infinity to infinity, so that's what the range is. So I'm telling you that there are three different ways to write it. You don't have to write all three ways. Don't write all three ways. Choose one that you're most comfortable with and write that. Now this feels like a waste of time because we just said like the domain is everything and the range is everything. What about this one? Well, okay, let's think about this. Are there any values that x can't be? Okay, x can be 0, x can be 1, x can be 2, and these arrows go on and on and on forever. I can put a million in here and get a number to spit out. It's going to be a very large number, but it'll spit out a number. So again, the domain here is all the real numbers. But what about the range? Is there any value that this equation won't spit out? Um, okay, if y is 9, x is 3. If y is 4, y, x is 2. What if y was negative 3? If y was negative 3, there's no x value there. There is no way to make a negative y value get spat out by this equation here. So our range is not everything. It's only all of the positive numbers and 0 as well. Now careful how you write that. I'm including 0 with the square bracket and then off to positive infinity, and I use the curve bracket there because I can't include infinity. So that's my domain and my range here. So what about the domain and the range for this circle here? Well, x can be these values, right? But there is no value outside of that circle. So x can't be anything less than negative 1 or anything more than 1. It can only be these values that give y values. It can only be anything on this line. So the domain is between negative 1 and 1, including negative 1 and 1. Now obviously the same is going to go for our range here because the y values that are on this circle, if I was to draw all of these coordinates, write all the coordinates out, all of the coordinates would have y coordinates between negative 1 and 1. And then finally, this one here, the domain, are there any values that x can't be? If I was to draw all of the coordinates, write all the coordinates out, would there be any x values that wouldn't be included? Yes, there would be any of these negative values. So in this case, the domain is all of my positive values. And the range, there are no y values that this can't be. This doesn't flatten off, it keeps going up like, like that. It gets like flatter and flatter and flatter, but it keeps going up forever and ever and ever. So the range is negative infinity to positive infinity. Y is in the set of the real numbers. Okay, this last one here, um, people get tricked up by this. A domain can also just be a list, right? These are only three points and that's it. Um, so the domain here is literally just a list of things. The domain is 1, 2, and 4. Those are the only x values this can take. And the range is 2, 3, and 7. They are the only y values that this thing can take. Now, Everything we've looked at in here is called an implied or maximal domain and an implied or maximal range. It's not always the case that they will be implied or maximal domains. Sometimes they are explicit domains. Let's look at those. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. This is an explicit domain. 
We're being told that there is a relation between x and y, and that relation is the equation y equals 2x minus 3, but only where x is in the set of the number 2, 3, and 4. So if we were to sketch this, we wouldn't get a line, we'd just get three points. And those three points would be 2, 1, 3, 3, and 4, 5. There are three points. And that means that our domain and our range here, the domain is just 2, 3, 4, and the range is just 1, 3, 5. So there we have it. In the previous example, they were all implied. We weren't told what the domain is. In this one, we're told what the domain is, and we can find the range from that. So here's another example here, written in a different way. Uh, the relation is y equals negative x plus 1, where x is greater than or equal to 4. Now again, if we sketch this, this is a straight line, and normally we just sketch it going from infinity to negative infinity to infinity, but we're given an explicit domain of x must be greater than or equal to 4. So the sketch of that would look a little bit different. It can only start where x is um, equal to 4. Now when x is equal to 4, y is equal to negative 3. So that point there is 4, negative 3 which means that the domain for this was explicitly stated. Domain x is greater than or equal to 4, but the range I can find, the range is uh, less than or equal to negative 3. Range equals y is less than or equal to negative 3. So when you're given questions like this, you might need to sketch it a little bit and get a sense of what you're looking at, and then you can think about what the range might be. So that's domain and range, a very simple idea, all allowable x values, all allowable y values.